Good evening. What I've got here is something I dug up out of my bin of things, airplane things, and it's a it's an instrument that I picked up in a I don't know, in a bulk purchase of some sort. It's a Hobbyco model engine compression gauge. Now this thing is no longer sold, probably for good reason, probably because it is really kind of worthless. But there was a thread on RC groups today, and actually over the last few days, where they were talking about using compression gauges to determine when an engine needs to be rebuilt. So I figured, hey, I remembered that I had this thing in my bin of parts, so I figured, well, I'll pull it out. I just so happen to have an OS 46 SF engine here that happens to not have a glow plug in it. So I just threw any old prop on it, put a spinner on it, because if you haven't used a compression gauge to check, check your engine, or your car engine, motorcycle engine, or airplane engine before, what you basically do is you thread this thing into where the spark plug, or in this case, the glow plug hole would be. And that's really the only thing that differs from this, from any other compression gauge, is that it's got the proper thread, the quarter 32 thread, to go into a glow plug. So you thread this in here, and unfortunately due to how it's turned out to be turned angled here, I'm going to have to try and figure out how I'm going to do this. But what you do is you turn this thing, screw this in, and then you basically just crank your engine over. Now yeah, you could do it by hand, and you can kind of see it building pressure. But that's really not the best way to do it. And there's a little bleed valve on here where you just kind of bleed that pressure off. So what I've got here is my electric starter. So I'm going to attempt to show this in action with the starter. So I'm going to hold this thing real tight. Oops. So we see I've got about, looks like, 70 PSI on this scale. So let me re relieve the pressure on that. Let's do this a couple of times and see how repeatable this is. Because really that's kind of the key. And I guess this is usable if you were to use this um, when you first got an engine and then over the course of the, the life of the engine it might be useful. Let me see if it's still framed up here. Try to get my arm around the tripod at the same time. It's really not that easy to do, but... So this time it went up to about, I don't know, 65 PSI. So that's trial two. Let's do this the third time. Oh, see, that time the relief valve didn't seal. Okay, it's climbing there now, so it'll be all right. And it's loosening up on me here. So as you can see, this isn't, it's probably a little bit easier if you put it on an airplane. But I thought I'd try and demonstrate this on the, the table here. It's proven to be a little bit more difficult than I thought. I'll just give it a couple short bursts there. So now this thing is still losing pressure because this thing probably just isn't, it's old and it probably just isn't sealing very well. I guess my point in doing this is this particular gauge seems pretty darn unreliable because it's old and maybe that's just the way it is. Maybe it's just a piece of crap to begin with. I think it was something that somebody had an idea to make just to make money off of people because you really don't need this kind of thing to determine if an engine is losing compression. That's something you can really tell in how it operates and flies, but you can see even this, the thing is still leaking here. So anyway, that's my attempt to show you how silly a model engine compression gauge can be at least based on my experiment here. I uh, hope you learned something.